Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Data Wrangling in R. Uh, I'm Dr. VVB. We're going to continue on with our strings here. Um, we last ended with the cert flexible searches, and so now we're going to uh, detect matches in strings. All right, so let's start here uh, by Banner. All right, so str detect um, returns a logical vector same length. So what does that mean? So let's say y. We already had x. So let's make up oops, y is a collection of uh, apple oops, uh, banana and pear and we run so now if we print y we get apple banana pear so let's use str detect and detect matches in the letter. Okay, so I'm gonna close this up. This is gonna be track. Okay, so what it does is it looks at all of our strings and it determines if there are the letter Y in it. So, or sorry, the letter E in it. Uh, so apple has a letter E, so it's true. Banana, no letter E, so it's false. Pear has a letter E, so it returns true. So you can search to see if something is contained in there. If it is, it says true. If it doesn't, it says false. Um, let's... How many common words start with letter? So built into... Tidyverse thing is another data set called words. It's just a list of a whole bunch of common words. So we're going to pair this str detect with a uh, regular expression. So let's do sum. So we want to count the number of common words, str detect, so words is our thing, with the letter E. Okay, so how many, uh, did I say, do we want to do start? How many words contain? Let's do contain letter E. Okay, so if we run this, then we have 536 of the words contain the letter E. Now, um, let's get more. Let's get more complex. How many? words and in a vowel. So let's do the mean. Or no. But let's do let's see. What proportion? Sweet, let's because I want to use mean here. Mean, so the average STR detect of words and Remember, we have to end with a, the dollar sign. Uh, so we're going to do list all the vowels. A, E, I, O, I, mm, mm, I, O, U. The order of that doesn't really matter. Um, so let's put them in order. They are in the alphabet. And then we're going to say dollar sign because we want to know only the words that end in the letter, or the average number of words that end uh, with the letter so 27%, right? Now we could do, if we wanted to do start, what's the average number of words that start with the letter E? We just take that off and remember we put the caret in front. So 17% start with the letter E. 
Um, let's do find all the words that don't contain O or U. So no O is what we're gonna call this uh, data set. And we're gonna do the opposite. So remember the opposite is exclamation point of str detect. And our words data frame. And we're gonna say O or U. So give me everything. So it's gonna say find every word that has O or U, and then this says give me the opposite of that. So I'm gonna run that, and if I print no O, we get a true false vector here. So it's gonna it goes one by one. It says, does this word have an O not contain an O or a U? True, true, false, false, right? So you say, oh, that might not, you know. That's not super useful to go through all these trues or falses, right? Well, uh, now let's extract those words, right? So we want to take them out instead of just getting the logical report back of true or false. Um, so let's do words is our data set. And we want to only get the words that are not over you. So we're just going to take this command, copy it, put it after the exclamation point, right? But you only want one exclamation point. All right, so we want the words that are not O or U. There you go. So all these words, none of them should have an O or U, and it looks like that is the case. So this is a nice way of kind of filtering out um, the number or the uh, letters or sequences. So say you are you have a whole bunch of sequences and you're like, I want to make sure I don't use any heat shock proteins and you have the motif for it. So you can say, get rid of all the sequences that don't have, uh, or that have the heat shock protein motif or a transcription binding site or you know, whatever methylation site, etc. a whole bunch of different things. So there's a lot of use in this. Um, so let's finish up here. Um, Let's do, um, oops, up here. You can also use str count uh, to say how many matches there are in a string. So let's run x again, All right? So we have our three tiny. Uh, codes str count x and let's see how many times c occurs so there's zero c's in the first there's six c's in the second zero c's in the third easy breezy so if you're looking at gc content uh, so let's do uh, g and c so gc's content is something important in terms of um, your melting temperature. Um, so this gives me a G or a C. So if it's a double, uh, a double stranded, a G pairs with a C, so this is okay for us uh, for the GC content uh, uh, aspect. But uh, GCs have three hydrogen bonds between them as opposed to A's and T's, only have two, right? So if you're melting DNA for like annealing primers and things like that, GC content's really important because you need higher melting temperatures to break three chemical bonds instead of two. So this is a really good uh, example of how this is applicable, right? So when you usually, if you go online to a uh, site that allows you to make primers, it kind of calculates the melting temperature based on the DC of the, or the GC, excuse me, uh, of the primers that you're designing. Um, but you could do it manually too, if you wanted to. Um, okay, back on track here. Uh, so, um, let's couple this, let's couple this with the tape. So let's make a data frame with triple and our word is equal to words. Uh, so we're taking the words from this, this master list, not the, the OU absent list. And we're going to do this command called I equals C colon 
um, word. And so all this does is it adds a column that numbers sequentially. So if we run this, um, oh, I need to those words. print up this data frame real quick. So we see um, these are all the A words. We put them into a tibble and seek along just made another column. I will put, we put that for iteration, I guess. Uh, and then you can put, you can name it whatever you want. You can just say, let's do it like this real quick and say count. Um, and then if we run it, see it says count now. Um, so this just adds a number um, along. And so let's mutate it now. And mutate. So we took our data frame, we piped down, we're mutating. We're going to say vowels equals str count of our words data frame. And we're going to count every time there's an A, E, I, O. Then we're going to say uh, constants equals str count. count. We're going to say words. This is the data frame they're going to look through. We're going to say whenever. Consonants, able two consonants, except four consonants. Perfect. Vowels, a the letter a the word a has a vowel. About has three, etc. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. All right. So I've probably beaten you down with all this data wrangling. Uh, that's the end of it. I mean, there's a lot more can really get into the weeds um, and so I, I want to provide you with the bare tools uh, to be able to go through data and put it in a format that you will um, actually be able to use and so in our videos going forward we'll probably get a little bit uh, you'll get exposed to these again we'll be moving things around putting things into tibbles or searching for motifs and, and things like that um, and so they'll come up again um, I don't when I go through this code you're writing your own uh, guide right so you're gonna have all this stuff um, but the biggest thing is I want you exposed to it because I don't expect you to memorize all the stuff I don't have all the stuff memorized um, but I want you to know that it exists and kind of know what it means so if you forget how to use it it'll be easy to refresh your memory because we've gone through it, right? Um, and so I promise you being exposed to this stuff, if you do get into R, is really going to help you uh, because copying and pasting and, and like I said, if you work with Excel sheets, going in and changing your base data and you mess it up, you can lose a lot of time and, and valuable data and stuff that way. Um, so I hope you enjoyed, or at least tolerated, <laughs> the data wrangling uh, unit. Um, stick with me and we'll get into more uh, topic-specific content. Uh, so I hope to see you guys in the next one.